Hi everyone and welcome to our managerial accounting series on cost volume profit analysis. To get started, let's take a look at this graph and what we're ultimately wanting to do is label everything in this graph. Okay, so the first thing we'll we'll label is the red line. So the red line has a, at zero dollars if there's zero activity. And it keeps climbing as our activity increases. This is called our revenue line. The next line we'll label is the blue line. The blue line hits the axis, the y-axis, at $30,000. And it increases as our activity increases. This is our cost line. We'll call it our total cost line. Because it, in, it includes both fixed and variable costs that we talked about in the prior series of videos. Now, where these two lines cross, where your revenue line and your cost line cross, that is called your break even point. And if we go back to the total cost line, the line that goes across in purple, straight across the line, we know that line represents our fixed costs. Now let's take a look at the revenue and cost lines where they cross. Everything above where they cross, or the break-even point, this is called profit. This is the profit area. Everything below the break-even point Anything in this area is called the loss area. Now we're going to use this graph to answer these questions just by eyeballing the graph. So if the above school attracts 400 students to take the course, will the venture be profitable? So here is 400. We're just going to kind of go up on our graph here. So it crosses the cost, I'm sorry, the revenue line at about $40,000, and if we go on up, we can see it crosses the cost line at about $46,000. So that area right there would be our loss of about $6,000. So we have a loss, so the answer there would be no. We would not be profitable. We'd have about a $6,000 loss. And then it asks, what are the break-even sales in students and in dollars? Well, we can see, uh, there's our break-even point, if we draw it down. So in students, it's 5,000, or 500, and in dollars, it would be 50,000, would be our break-even point. There are a couple of ways that we can calculate our break-even, and the first method is called the income statement approach. Now, in this income statement approach, we're going to use what's called a contribution margin income statement. A contribution margin income statement looks like this. We're going to take sales, we're going to subtract our variable costs, and that's going to give us something called our contribution margin. Then we'll subtract our fixed costs, and that will give us our operating income. Now, if this is true, this income statement here, there's a couple of things that we can be assured of. We know that at break even, operating income has to equal zero. Well, if operating e income is zero at break even, another thing we must know is contribution margin and fixed cost must be equal. Those things we can be sure of with this contribution margin income statement and the object of break even, where revenues equal cost. The other method to calculate break even is called the contribution margin approach. So to calculate the break even in units, we would take our fixed costs and divide this by our contribution margin 
per unit. Okay, so this is the important part here, is per unit. If we're looking for units, then we divide by contribution margin per unit. So very important there. All right, so the next thing is to calculate break-even in sales dollars. The formula is very, very simple, and it's similar to the break-even in units. So fixed cost divided by the contribution margin ratio. Okay, so now we're looking at a ratio here. Well, how do we find this ratio? How do we calculate contribution margin ratio? Well, if we think back to the contribution margin income statement that we just talked about, we know sales minus variable cost is contribution margin. So if sales are $100,000 and variable costs are $80,000, then contribution margin must be $20,000. Well, we can represent these first three lines as a percentage of sales. So if sales is $100,000, that's 100% of itself. Variable cost divided by sales would be 80%. Therefore, contribution margin would be 20%. And that's the contribution margin ratio. Okay, so to get that, what we did is we took $20,000 in contribution margin and divided it by sales of $100,000. That gave me 20%. So that would be the contribution margin ratio. So now we're going to use those tools that we just talked about to calculate break-even. But the first thing we want to do is prepare two contribution margin income statements, one at the $250,000 level and one at the $360,000 level. So let's start with the one at $250,000. So we have sales of 250. We're also going to do one at 360. Then we're going to subtract our variable cost, and that will give us contribution margin. We'll subtract fixed cost, and that will give us operating income. So now we need to continue filling in the rest of this information. And they give us down here this little um, income statement at $312,000. And we can see that fixed costs are one seventy, dollars And we know that fixed cost within a relevant range remains constant. So we know that one seventy dollars is that number for fixed cost. But variable cost we know changes, so we know that variable cost at different revenue levels is not going to be 125000 as in this blue square down here, so we're going to have to figure out what that is. Well, we can use our ratios to figure that out. So sales minus variable cost is contribution margin, and they give me sales of 312500 variable cost of one twenty five, giving me a contribution margin of 187.5. We know that sales is 100% of itself. In this case, variable cost, 125 divided by 312.5 would be 40%, leaving me with a contribution margin percent of 60%. So variable cost would be 40%. Contribution margin should be 60% in all of this story here. So 40% of 250 would give me $100,000 in variable cost. We'll just do the 360 as well. So 40% of 360,000 would be 144, giving me a contribution margin at the 250 of 150,000, and at the 360 would give me contribution margin of 216. Now we can also find those numbers by taking the revenue numbers and multiplying by the 60% would give me that 150. 360 times 60% would give me the 216. Or just simple subtraction would also give us that. So whichever way works, you'd also check your math by doing that as well. So for the $250,000 revenue level, our operating income would be a loss, actually. So it would be an operating loss of $20,000. Fixed cost would still be the same for the $360,000 level, giving us a revenue 
of 46, I'm sorry, an operating income of 46,000. Now the next objective is to compute the break-even sales in dollars. So very important that you notice this because remember there's two different equations to use if we're using the contribution margin approach. Now one thing we should note here is wanting the break-even point. We know the break-even point is where income is zero. Well, we're given three income statements. We're given an income statement at $250,000. We're given an income statement at $312,500. And an income statement at $360,000. At 250, we had a loss of 20,000. At 312, we had an income of 175, and at 360, we had an income of 46,000. So just by looking at this, we can tell that the break-even is somewhere between 250,000 dollars in sales and 312,500, because these numbers are pretty close together here. They're just on opposite sides of the zero on the number line. So we know that. So our, whatever number we get here should be somewhere between three hundred twelve five hundred and two hundred fifty thousand. So that way we kind of know if we're right when we calculate this. All right, so let's look at an equation here. So they want us to use the contribution margin approach, which we know is fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. That's our formula. So fixed cost is one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and our contribution margin ratio is 60% or 0.6. So you should get 283,333 dollars and 33 cents as the operating in income to break even. Now what I'd like for you to do is to prove it. And to do that I would like for you to use the income statement approach. So you've got three income statements here in front of us. We have again 250, the 312,500 and 360. What you need now to do is to create another income statement at the $283,333.33 level. And when you're done, operating income should be zero. So press pause on your player. Compute that really quickly and come back and we'll see how you did. Okay, so if you created the income statement, it should look something like this. So you had sales at 283, 333, 33. 40% of that would be variable cost at 113, 333, 33. And your fixed costs were 170, which is equal to contribution margin, giving us an operating income of zero. So we have proven that the break even in sales dollars is 283, 333.33.